So this is game three of the finals of the 2020 War of the Ring Championship Tournament, International Tournament. And we've just bid Dwarven Rings to decide who is going to play free and who is going to play shadow. Dwarven Rings are basically a re-roll for an action die that you use at the start of the turn before any actions have been taken for the round. And I bid one so that I could play Shadow, and he accepted. Normally, I would have expected him to counterbid with two rings. That's typically the going rate. But um, in this game, he, he, he told me after the game he wanted to play free, and he thought that for, for two Dwarven Rings, it's a little bit of an advantage for free. So my opponent is uh, James, and uh, I'm Ira. And I thought it would be fun to take you through this game. So I'm playing with cards on. Obviously, I didn't know what, what cards he started off drawing, but it does make for a little bit more interesting playthrough. So this is the start of the game. Let's see what happens. So we'll go through the rolls. I allocate one eye and roll zero musters. Obviously, that's a little bit of a disappointment. At least he only got one character movement and uh, I got a good number of army movements. So it, it certainly could be worse, but obviously getting musters early is better. With a roll like this, I don't think I have a lot of choices. I'm going to send my armies to the, to the north and hope that by next round I'll, draw some, I'll roll some musters and be able to put these elves under siege. It seems very likely he's going to use these musters to get the elves to war. Maybe I can delay enough of my intentions that he won't use both of these musters getting the elves to war, but we'll see. It can be a little bit of a benefit if he gets the elves to war also because then I can get the Witch King a little sooner. So let's see what happens. So he gets a little bit... Uh, oh, I draw a character... I draw a um, army card because I'm thinking, well, I am not going to have good chances of revealing the Fellowship and maybe I'll get something useful for, for movement. And um, my plan is eventually to get Corsairs of Umbar, so I know I'm going to get these armies over here, so I'm thinking, well, might as well try and get into my army card sooner rather than later, my strategy card sooner rather than later. All right, so I go ahead and do some predictable moves, organizing some armies here. He draws a card, which is obviously a little bit of bad luck when you have Gandalf uh, at the beginning of the game. Obviously, you'd rather just play a card and draw a card instead of simply draw a card. So it was a little bit unlucky. He didn't get anything playable with his with his, with his his first two cards, but at least here he got Riders of Theoden, which is a great card early game. Really, any time. Um, okay, so I go ahead and do my army movements, and he moves the Fellowship and safe for that, and then I, maybe I'm, he's, maybe he thinks I'm looking for Gondor and he's going to spend one of his musters down on Gondor, but uh, no, I can't fool him, and he musters the elves twice, and I go along with marching my armies up toward the north. I move this army here because I have the shadows, the shadow lengthens in hand, so I can jump this army over here when I'm ready, and in case I get additional mustering cards like uh, the one that puts three regulars in Dol Guldur, the one that puts two on um, every um, Sauron, or three Sauron strongholds, I can, I can play that here. So I prefer to move this here first and then bring those over if I'm going to end up playing Shadow Lankins. I also don't mind holding this in hand as a combat effect because Mumakel is so good, but it's a while before I'm getting the Sothrons and Easterlings to war. So... My, my current plan is to play this as a um, movement card to get this army here if I need to, to rush the elves in case he doesn't get too many musters next turn. All right, so let's see what happens next turn. Uh, I allocate one eye again and only roll one muster. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to bring in Saruman or the Witch King this round. And... Um, he gets some nice movement here. This is really nice. He's going to get to play some some character cards. 
And but at least I do still get one muster, so I can get I can get Sauron to war, and then next next round bring in the Witch King, uh, because I'm going to be able to get these elves to war, and he's going to have a little bit of a question about how he's going to use this Will of the West. I'm guessing that he's going to move twice, but maybe he'll use one move once and then save this muster to save this Will of the West to muster the elves if I put them to war too soon. One thing that I would be thinking about for him at this point is, is there anything he can do to to slow this army down getting into the Woodland Realm? It's always a little bit sad when you can, when Woodland Realm gets besieged with his big army with, with only these two units in it. So he does something clever at the beginning, which is play Riders of Theoden, so that if he draws into scouts or anything that reinforces this, he's going to have a good chance to... Um, he, if he had, for instance, if he drew scouts, one of, one of the three um, strategy cards that have scouts, then he could, if he wanted to, use this Will of the West to get the um, regular into Old Forest Road. That'll slow my armies down a little bit, and it will, um, and it will, if I don't have, if I don't have a swarm of bats which is relatively unlikely this early in the game, um, he'll get an extra regular into Woodland Realm and that will also provoke the North to war. So, you know, there, there are some good things. This makes sense. He, he draws uh, Dane Ironfoot's Guard, which is obviously great because I'm coming up north. Uh, I continue my march. Now, I go ahead and move these guys the hard way because what else am I going to do? There are no other armies that are really productive particularly productive for me to be moving at this point, so might as well do that and save the Shadow Lengthens for later. In case I need to reinforce this Lorien Siege, I can muster up in Moria or North Dunland and, and get in there pretty easily. And maybe I can use these guys once they're at war if I can reinforce their Boar Siege if I need to at some point. So keeping my options open, might as well use them. Now, he passed here. This is an interesting choice. If it were me, I think I would have played Dane Ironfoot's guard here because if I then redraw um, a, it's a relatively low chance, only three out of 20, but you know, I might get it. Um, one of the cards that have scouts, I can then know that I can use my Will of the West to, to get this army in uh, Told Forest Road and, and block the progress of, of this big army and just generally reinforce Woodland Realm. Um, Instead he passes, and now I get the Sauron to war, so next turn I'm going to be moving in. And so he's basically given up hope on Woodland Realm, and he plays Smeagol Help's Nice Master. Obviously that's a great card. You definitely want to play it at some point, but I don't think it's quite as urgent as drawing uh, strategy cards at this point. I would I would want to be digging a little deeper into my strategy cards to try and get the reinforcements. I see that Lorien's going to be coming under siege. I see that Woodland Realm's going to be coming under siege. I, I want to get to those two cards if I if I can. So this is slight, but uh, uh, that's probably what I would have done. Of course, this is this is a great tile. You, you definitely want to play that at some point. All right, he draws House of Stewards. That's pretty useless at this point to him. And I continue with my march. I'm at this point very happy to have gotten these two armies right outside the elves. He didn't get a whole bunch of musters, and um, he obviously moves the fellowship. I miss. And at this point, I could attack, but better to wait so that he doesn't get to muster. It's wise for him to save this until his last die, so that if I do attack the elves, then he can he can muster them. And if I don't attack the elves, then he can move the fellowship. So I go ahead and wait. What else can I, what can I do here that's useful? I draw a card. Now I know that I'm going to end up discarding two cards as a result of that. So maybe I should have done something else with it. Maybe I should have attacked and then he would have perhaps mustered or maybe he still would have moved. I don't know, but I didn't actually have any particularly playable cards at this point. So I at this point, I want to draw into Corsairs of Umbar. So that's why I decide to draw. And I feel like my armies are moving fast enough that I can potentially race him to, to get my 10 victory points before he gets the the fellowship to Mordor. Um, 
we'll see. So he goes ahead and moves, that makes sense. Um, obviously it's nice to catch him on the third move so that in case you get a reveal, he has to go the long way instead of going through Moria, but I miss. So as I continue to miss these hunts, I think, well, you know, it, the, the one benefit is he doesn't have Gandalf yet. He's only rolling four dice. Of course, I'm only rolling seven dice. So, um, but I'm thinking mostly at this point, okay, I have to I have to race him and I'm not going to worry so much about corruption because I'm just not making a lot of progress on the fellowship. All right, so I go ahead and attack. Think for a moment, if you, if you were going to put yourself in my shoes, would you attack Lorien or would you attack Woodland Realm? My analysis was I want to attack Woodland Realm because if this army can mostly stay intact, I want to be able to take out Erebor without having to, the other things, without having to reinforce too much. Obviously, I'd also like to be able to take out Lorien without reinforcing too much because um, if he gets a third elite in there, that's, that's a more buff army. In the end, I decide to um, attack Lorien because I think... This is still a relatively small army, a size three army compared to another size three army. I think I can probably take both of them out relatively quickly. Um, also, my thinking is maybe I can defeat Lorien before he gets a power too great and um, before he draws reinforcements. So probably this isn't a big enough army to take it out as is. So my, my plan is to start with Woodland Realm first and then reinforce a little bit. I do still have um, the Shadow Lengthen, so I'm thinking it's gonna be relatively easy to reinforce this. All right, so I draw my two cards. Now, this is an interesting situation and a pretty potentially key moment in the game. Uh, I have eight cards in my hand and I have to discard two of them. I have Grand. Um, obviously I'm hoping to get, uh, the Witch King this turn and Grand is obviously a very good card. So I certainly am going to keep this. Uh, I have half orcs and goblin men and that's pretty flexible. It gets you extra leadership, um, and activates all the combat effects that require you to have an Isengard unit. Um, shadow lengthens, breaking of the fellowship, the King is revealed. Mustering of Long Planned War, which is um, obviously quite useful for the Desperate Battle effect. Nazgul Strike, which lets you move the Nazgul, and then as long as the Fellowship is, as long as the Nazgul is on the Fellowship, then you get to roll um, for the hunt or discard a character event. And Shadows on the Misty Mountain, which I just drew, which is a great, um, very happy to see, which is a very great reinforcement card. And I'm obviously going to bring those guys right, right into Lorien. So what do you discard here? What two cards do you discard? Um, you might want to pause for a moment, think about it, decide what you would want to do yourself. And if you have, oh, you just want to see what I did. Um, I ended up discarding The King is Revealed which is pretty straightforward because I'm not a huge fan of Relentless Assault as a combat effect, um, and um, the Nazgul Strike. Because my thinking was, well, it's going to be a long time before the Fellowship manages to get revealed. Um, drawing one extra tile, who really cares? Um, at this point, I'm really going to be focused on trying to do uh, a bunch of damage. And I mean, uh, do a bunch of get a bunch of victory points quickly. And I like the combat effect for um, Dread and Despair better than better than Black Breath at this point in the battle. So at this point in the game, so that's what I was thinking. Um, in the end, I think that was a pretty serious mistake. Per perhaps my biggest mistake of the game, um, because um, Nazgul Strike is just a powerful effect. Getting getting to draw a tile. Um, is more powerful than, potentially more powerful than inflicting some more corruption because the tile can both inflict corruption and potentially reveal. And I think that's the real, that's the real difference between these two cards. Okay, so um, those are my discards. Um, and I finally get a whole bunch of muster. So obviously I'm really happy with that. Um, and he uh, gets a bunch of musters, but not a lot of movement. So I'm happy to see he's not getting a bunch of movement. I get my musters. I'm going to power up my, my dice this turn and uh, put Woodland Realm under siege.
So th this is really the best this best role I could ask for, except for, yeah, sure, maybe I didn't need these two eyes. I could have used those for something. But this is this is obviously a very good role at this point in the game. So I don't have a lot of choices here. He clearly musters a woodland realm. I clearly put it under siege. And then he goes ahead and plays Dane Ironfoot's guard. Obviously a good good card to play since I'm up there. And he draws into power two great. So that's wonderful. It's gonna slow me down and it will cost me quite a few cards. So I continue, these dice are basically spoken for. I'm gonna get Saruman, I'm gonna get Isengard to war, I'm gonna get Saruman, and then I'm gonna get the Witch King. And that's my turn, but I'm happy to get two more dice. All right, so what does he do? He moves the Fellowship, he's safe again. I get um, Saruman, and then he plays a power too great. I think that's, I think that's a perfectly good play. Um, you know, one other thing you could you could possibly consider is um, getting this dude into Erebor now, moving these guys to Westamnet in preparation for this eventual attack. Um, you know, he doesn't really have any place that he can muster uh, productively. Putting more elves into uh, Rivendell or Greyhavens doesn't help, but... Um, You know, what does he have at this point? He does have certain ships, so he's feeling good about Dol Amroth being safe if I ever do play Corsairs. Um, you know, I, I think this is a perfectly reasonable play. I always like to get this guy into Airbore, but when's when's the right time to do it? It seems like there's still he's still gonna have plenty of time to get that guy in there. So I like playing this to slow down the, the Lorian attack. Um, and he does give me an interesting choice. So I have six cards in my hand right now. I have one die. I could discard two cards right now and then immediately draw two cards back at the start of next turn. And if I don't do it now, I'm going to end up discarding two, two cards again. Um, so in the end, uh, think, think for a second if you want, pause the video, decide, would you spend this die and two cards to effectively save two extra cards and get rid of this right now? Or would you muster and get the Witch King? So uh, my choice was uh, get the Witch King. Uh, you know, getting an extra die is really good. There's a chance I won't roll a muster next turn and getting rid of my two worst cards, while well, yes, is a little sad. Um, I really want the extra dice. So um, here's my situation. You can look at you can look at my cards here. Um, I just drew Rage of the Dunlendings and Cans of Corpses. I know that I need an army an army um, card to get rid of a power too great, and I'm committed to Lorien, so I definitely need to get rid of this. Um, and then I need some character card. And at this point, do I really care much between Candles of Corpses and Breaking Fellowship? No. Um, obviously, I want to play Shadows on the Misty Mountain because that's a great reinforcement effect and it's going to let me take Lorien more effectively. Rage of the Dunderlings has a lot of flexibility. It can let me potentially s surprise uh, Rivendell if he doesn't get many musters. I can get uh, a bunch of dudes up there quickly, and, and especially if Lorien happens to go well or I get other reinforcements, I can I can bring quite a big force uh, with Rage of the Dunderlings and Shadows on the Misty Mountains to Rivendell depending on the situation and obviously i can go after the shire or even the gray havens at some point in the future if um he ends up mustering a bunch of elves uh in other places so or if i just catch him without without musters for a turn so i like this a lot i like the, i like rage a lot i like shadows on the misty mountain a lot uh, I obviously like Grand because that's very uh, efficient action-wise. I definitely need to keep one of these army cards, and I really like both of them because it's a good good reinforcement. So um, you can think about what you would discard. I ended up discarding. Uh, mustering of long planned war with desperate battle, which is obviously a good combat effect, but I need to get rid of something and candles of corpses. And then my plan is to get rid of the power too great using breaking of the fellowship and uh, the shadow lengthens, saving the half orcs to reinforce this, this army up here. All right, so we roll. And uh, I'll just pause for a second. He had something interesting, which is he has three ends. He, he drew three ends 
in the top five cards of his of his character deck. Um, and so given that I haven't mustered at all with Saruman, um, he has about a 25% chance of inflicting six hits just, just right off the bat. Now, he doesn't have Gandalf the White. Gandalf is still in the Fellowship, so maybe he doesn't want to hold on to these for so long. And you can see that he really um, debated what, what to discard. Um, we can undo, and you'll see what he had. So he had Through a Day and a Night, um, Imrahil of Dol, Dol Amroth, uh, certain ships, Book of Marzable, and then the three ants. So what would you, what would you discard here? So we had some interesting card discard choices in, in the early game. Um, so initially you can see that he, he chosen to discard through day and night. Then he thought about it more and decided that in fact, it was better to discard an ent because the chances of, um, actually take taking out Saruman were too low because he doesn't have Gandalf yet. And even a 25% chance probably is not worth the, the effort. So he gets rid of one of the ants and, um, and I think that's the right call. I think, I think that's definitely the right call because, um, this is, this is a more powerful combat effect for, for what's going on in, in the current situation. All right. So, um, I get a perfectly nice roll. I still wouldn't mind a, a couple more musters to get the Southrons and Easterlings to war, but I'm, but I'm rolling a lot of, a lot of combat here. So, so that's obviously good for me. Though you'll notice I end up using one as a, a Palantir, or two of them actually as a Palantir um, later. So I, I, one of the nice things about having cards like Half Orcs and Goblin Men and um, Rage of the Dunling, Shadows, uh, Grand, these, these give a lot of flexibility to, to, for my role. So if I end up rolling Palantirs, I can still have productive turns. Um, Okay, so, and I have one die that I'm going to have to pitch to get rid of power too great. So, though this looks like a very good roll, and it certainly is, I actually was set up for, for quite a lot of flexibility here. I was pretty resilient with the cards in my hand and what I had to do this turn. Um, okay, so he gets um, beautiful movement, two movement and a will of the west. So he's, and I have two eyes, so he's really hoping, okay, he can kill off Gandalf, get Gandalf back, and um, continue to make progress with the Fellowship. So um, we're both proceeding with our turns. I go ahead and initially I'm thinking I'm just going to do a single attack against Woodland Realm, but um, I realize I might as well play Grand because what I really want to do is reinforce this army with the with the half orcs and goblin men, and then proceed to go on to to Erebor. Um, or maybe I relocate to um, Lorien, but I'm not quite ready to take Lorien yet because I need to get rid of this. I need to muster um, with shadows. So um, I, I think spending a little time up here with a, a powerful attack such that this army can then move on is uh, seems like a good plan. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I go ahead and do Grand. We have a perfectly fine battle, pretty average. I cycle Breaking of the Fellowship. Um, I know that I'm going to end up discarding a um, character card anyway to um, a power too great, but this minimizes some um, damage coming back at me because I can forfeit some leadership, and it lets me cycle deeper into the character deck because, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Cruel Weather, I wouldn't mind seeing some of the red tiles um, to slow him down, and... Um, Mostly, why not? Because I'm going to end up discarding a, a character anyway. The only potential drawback is if I um, if I draw a really good character card that I'm not going to want to destroy to to power too great, then I'm going to end up delaying this battle against Lorien. But that's okay with me. I have enough other things to do this turn. I think to myself, even if I draw a really good character card, I can I can hold it until next turn. I can play it this turn with my my character die, and then next turn I can um, draw a new one. I had actually hoped to roll at least one Palantir so that I could discard my cards for um, a power to great and then redraw at least one so that I could continue to cycle through my deck with the Witch King, but so be it. All right, so we have a fairly average battle. He plays um, some combat cards and um, 
He played Imrahil of Dol Amroth here, which was interesting. That's the reinforcement for um, Dol Amroth, and it makes me think that um, it makes me think that he has certain ships because I don't know that I would ever play this as a combat card with these guys sitting in Umbar with Dol Amroth like this and Gondor far from war. Now the Southrons and Easterlings are not at war yet, so maybe he's. Um, Maybe he's just feeling confident that that I still have a while to go before I get before I get to um, Corsairs. I've only drawn a quarter of my uh, strategy deck, so maybe. But it definitely, when I saw this, it definitely made me suspicious of um, of certain ships. And for for his sake, he played it when he had two two elven regulars left, and um, uh, I ended up doing one hit. So I think it was it, it makes sense to me that he played it there, and it did end up helping. I mean, the rules didn't end up particularly mattering, but um, it makes sense to me that he would try and keep that army alive because now I have the choice between pressing or having to spend an extra die to finish off Woodland Realm. I assume that he does not have the reinforcement card for Woodland Realm, because if he did, he would have probably played it uh, instead of passing. So uh, I decide to stop, and uh, that's going to let me cycle an extra card for the Witch King, and it's going to um, uh, just save me a hit point. I don't need to do a hit point to myself. I'm willing to spend an extra die. All right, so I play my Warg. Now my leadership is up to five. And um, then he, I go ahead and finish off Woodland Realm. He does not do any damage back to me. And um, this idea of having letting him muster once there, but zero times in Lorien, I'm feeling quite good about because this army survived mostly intact. It only took me... I mean, I did play Grand, which is obviously a powerful effect. Um, but it's nice that that's eliminated before he's reinforced it um, anymore. All right, and then he proceeds to move the fellowship. I, <clears throat> I miss. I play Shadows on Misty Mountain to muster up, as planned, because I'm going to use my final dice to put Erebor under under siege. So I'm getting ready to. Um, <clears throat> I want to get efficiency out of this army movement, so this army can move here and this army can move here at the same time, because Southron and Easterlings just aren't at war yet, so I can't. I can't be doing anything useful with them. And I don't have other armies on the board that are, that are that useful. I did want to spend that muster to start getting these guys to war, but if I didn't use that muster to get um, the Shadows on Misty Mountains, then I'm, I'm really wasting uh, time with these, with these army movements. So I muster first. All right, he moves again. At this point, he's probably hoping that I hit him to um, kill off Gandalf, but I miss. I mean that's not that bad um, because the fellowship is now at six movement and I've I've hit them zero times I think um, so obviously I'm not I'm not feeling great about the hunt and uh, I really just I really just need to hurry um, so I continue with my movement plan um, he uses a ring here and um, he uses a ring to move hoping that uh, I hit and um, do damage. I have a 75% chance of hitting. Uh, almost certainly he'll be able to kill off Gandalf if I do, and then he'll be able to um, immediately resurrect Gandalf. So I think this is I think this is a great play on his part, and he said after the game that if the 25% chance happened and he missed, um, and I missed him, then he just would have used this to move again, to move four times with, with the Fellowship, because he has tons of... of companions in the fellowship he's not worried about uh corruption in any way might as well just continue flying so i i think that makes a whole lot of sense obviously i'm happy to get a ring as um a shadow but um i'm i'm unhappy that he's gonna get uh gandalf or has good chances to get gandalf so i finally i finally hit um I draw an eye and he reveals through Moria because of course why not corruption just isn't an issue um, and then on top of that I draw an eye so he doesn't even take any more though at this point who who really cares we both know that corruption isn't the issue it's just is he going to get enough swords uh, character movement to, to get the fellowship in so um, nicely played on his part he uh, I then uh, attack uh, Erebor I'm not quite ready to get rid of um, the uh, power too great. Um, I could use Fox of Curbane and um, Shadow Lengthens. I don't mind that too much, but um, you know why not? Um, 
why not wait to see what I draw? Maybe I'll maybe I'll get something even worse that I'll prefer to ditch next turn. And these are two attack dice. So might as well use my attack dice now. And then next turn, if I roll non-attack dice, then I can use up the non-attack dice to get rid of power too great. So that was my thinking there. Um, it's not like I'm taking uh, Lorien this turn anyway if I go for it. So um, might as well wait see what I roll next time and use my attack dice while I have them. So uh, he gets Gandalf, very nicely played on his part, and um, I attack the dude in Iron Hills. Obviously I don't really need Flocks of Corbain to be able to defeat him, but um, I play it to cycle because I want to get, uh, at this point I'm like, oh, he's only three moves away. Um, I want to I want to be able to get cards that can stall him like Cruel Weather or um, you know, Nazgul Strike or, or Nazgul Search or anything like that. Uh, and I'm certainly at this point regretting the fact that I um, discarded uh, Nazgul Strike because it could be, he, he could potentially get in next turn and, and it would be a good card. All right, so um, I take Iron Hills. You know, did I need to do that? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Eventually I'm gonna get my Southron and Easterlings to war. I wanna move them in. Um, I do have Shadow Lengthen, so I wanna be prepared to reinforce this. Um, it's it's important to, to get that cleared up. Okay, um, the North is still really far from war, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna let those guys sit there for a while. All right, so next round he gets five dice. Um, I allocate an eye and roll one, and he gets this beautiful roll. Um, this gives him three movement, and because Strider is guide, he's going to be able to hide and move and move and move, and if I reveal him once, he's going to be able to hide again. So um, this is this is a scary roll for me. I don't have uh, Southron and Easterlings at war, so I'm not even threatening Day Without Dawn. I mean, I don't have Day Without Dawn, but I'm, I'm not even threatening it. Um, so uh, that's a great role for him. This is also a good role for me. I have, um, you know, five attacking dice, um, and I'm going to use one of these to, to get rid of the power to great. So, um, I wouldn't have minded, um, one other character, um, you know, a character role here or an extra Palantir if I'm going to try and draw into, um, additional cards to, to stall him. And I'm, I'm really regretting um, Nazgul Strike because this is exactly the situation where Nazgul Strike is great, where he's already moved a couple times in the turn, and then I put the Nazgul on him, and it just has very good chances of successfully um, hitting the hunt. All right, so he hides with Strider's ability. That makes sense. Um, I muster the Southron in Easterlings. Do I do that? No, I think for a second. I, and I decide, look, I have a bunch of attack. If I need to muster them to war, then I can, but might as well do one attack in Erebor first. It will let me cycle a character card to see if I can get to a stall. And um, if my combat happens to go really well, then I don't even need to waste time um, mustering these guys to war right now. Uh, I can wait on that. So I, I make my... Um, attack first. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I decided to draw a character card first. So I, I'm at this point going, wow, I really need to stall him. I'll draw a character card. I'll see what, uh, and then I'll attack and I'll see what I want to cycle. I can use a ring. If I draw into one, I can use my ring to, to, to play it. All right. So he goes ahead and moves and um, I get lucky. I finally, I finally hit him. Well, for the, the second time in the game, but this is obviously a good time to hit him and I reveal him. So now he is at a situation where I have a chance to stall him by drawing any of the cards that let me um, reveal him, any of the cards that let me draw a tile and then uh, draw a tile that happens to reveal him. So um, this this was lucky for me, gave me, gave me some chances that, that maybe uh, I was lucky to have. All right, so I attack Erebor. I play my character card um, with the intention of um, just cycling it. I normally, I almost never play Morgul Wound um, as a as a combat card. I mean, I, I don't remember the last game that I've used this as a combat card, but he's at one corruption, two steps away from 
uh, Mordor with basically everyone in the fellowship. I just I don't feel like I have any chance of corrupting him. So I'm I'm at, I'm I'm not going to play this. And between uh, Black Breath and um, words of words of power, this one actually might do something because maybe I'll get rid of one of his leaders. Um, either way, my plan is to play She Loves Lair as a as a card, and then. Uh, have Warren with Sorrow and Toil or Morgul Wound, either one, one of them is going to be discarded to Power Too Great. So between these two, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I thought about playing Warren with Sorrow and Toil, especially because he has so many people still in the Fellowship. But again, I think to myself, getting rid of a few character cards for him is just not going to slow him down enough. What I really need um, is something like Cruel Weather or a Tile Drawing card. And I think, why don't I still have Nazgul Strike? Um, okay. So uh, the combat, you know, it's a pretty average combat. Uh, he does something to me, I do something to him, and I draw another uh, red tile, which is not bad to have, but I now know um, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to stall him. I can see in my hand, I, he's just going to, he's going to make it in unless I get lucky and reveal him a second time this turn. So um, he hides. Um, I then go ahead and muster the Southron and Easterlings to war because I know that I'm going to need them to reinforce this this combat to be able to take Erebor, and um, he moves and I miss. So he is now, I know for sure, getting in, and he doesn't know that yet, but I know that. Uh, and obviously getting in to Mordor by the end of turn five uh, with a full uh, fellowship is quite good. I'm going to have to get uh, go pretty fast with my military. Um, I get South Rons and Easterlings to war. He moves for the last time. I hit him, which is nice, uh, but I don't reveal him. I just do one corruption. Obviously, at that point, I would be very happy to reveal him uh, because I know I'm not going to be able to stall him in any other way. So might as well get the extra tile draw and then delay him again um, for an extra die at the start of next turn. But I miss... I mean, I just, I don't, I don't reveal him, but that's pretty average. I mean, um, it was lucky that I revealed him initially and, uh, you know, I had basically a 50, 50 shot of, of revealing him, um, here. So this is the, the last couple of turns been, you know, pretty, pretty average hunt. If I had been more clever and saved Nazgul Strike, I could have played Nazgul Strike before this, this move. And then, um, I would have had an extra chance to, uh, draw a reveal. Now, maybe I still would have drawn the one and I wouldn't have revealed him, but I would have had, you know, a 50% chance of stalling him. As it was, I had a 0% chance of stalling him. All right, so my only hope here is to go pretty fast militarily. So I um, I get rid of uh, a power too great um, using Warn of Sorrow and Toil and the Shadow Lengthens. And um, then I go ahead and just move some armies. So I got to move these armies in. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, is it worth it to get She Loves Lair or On On They Went into the pool by using this ring? Um, and, um, you know, I want them in the pool for when he starts moving, for sure. Uh, but I also hate to use my only ring to turn an attack die into a non-attack die. You know, generally what I want to be doing is using rings to turn non-attack dice into attack dice. Um, so I, I at this point, I'm just hoping, you know what, maybe he'll, he, he just won't roll that much movement next turn. Um, and I'll be able to I'll be able to play these again. If he had been revealed, then I would have had an extra turn to be able to to be able to play these. But I'm thinking, you know what? I'll I'll be able to play these at the start of next round, and um, he'll get one movement. But you know, probably he'll get revealed, and then I'll I'll be able to get both of them in before before he moves a second time. So not great, but okay. Um, I don't want to use up my ring. So that's what I do. I have no good ideas for where to move this. I haven't drawn Corsairs of Umbar yet, even though I really want to. Um, but I just haven't drawn it. And so what other army movement do you do? I mean, maybe I can move these guys in for some reason. That doesn't really do anything. Um, my thinking at this point is I have five victory points up here. I have two victory points here. And I need 
three more victory points. I'm thinking maybe I can muster up here and take Helm's Deep pretty quickly because he's never moved these guys in. Um, maybe I can draw Corsairs of Umbar. If I do, I can move backwards and take Dol Amroth if I need to. Um, and otherwise I can go in the hard way um, and maybe he won't roll musters. So I, you know, it's not entirely clear how I'm gonna get my final three victory points. Um, but given that I don't have Corsairs of Umbar right now and my odds of drawing them in the next you know, one turn or two is low enough. I figure this is this is the more likely way that I'm going to have to use this army going through Pilar gear. So that's why that's why I go ahead and do it, even though um, obviously I would like to uh, draw corsairs. All right, so he is very happy to declare into Mordor, uh, hidden at the beginning of turn five. Um, I draw Orc Patrol, so I was one card uh, too late. Not that, you know, maybe it wouldn't have helped me, but uh, so be it. And um, yeah, he has, you know, his card play is just, it, it, you know, certain ships is the key card here because he's going to reinforce Dol Amroth, and now he's like, oh, I have plenty of time to, to do that because he's going to see this army coming even more. Um, and what else, you know, what else does he really need to do here? He's, he's just in great shape. This is, this is a good good situation for the for the fellowship. Um, you know, we I, I don't know exactly what bet we would be taking at this point, but um, I would I would certainly be betting more on the fellowship at this point than on than on shadow. Um, okay, so he I allocate one eye because I'm just hoping to get a whole bunch of army attacks. Um, because eyes aren't going to really help me, and I roll well. This is great, right? This is this is six attacks. Um, plus, I still have my ring, so I can I can do seven attacks this turn if I need to. Um, and this muster is useful because I can get the mouth. Um, and you can see what he rolls. So so he rolled five movement. Um, that is a uh, that's a one out of thirty two chance to roll five movement. Um, he has he has a ring, so he really only needed four movement um, to be able to move maximally. But but obviously this is this is really good for him, and I think if we're taking bets at this point, um, you know, well I, I put it you know eighty to ninety percent chance of of him winning the game at this point. Um, so what do you do here? He has this Dwarven ring to reroll and he rolled three wills of the West. So he's scared of day without dawn because he doesn't know that I don't have day without dawn. But if I do have day without dawn and there's a one third chance that I do, um, I can wipe out two of his dice and, and that would, that would certainly hurt. Um, so what he does is he uses his Dwarven ring um, to re-roll this, and when you're re-rolling Will of the West, you just get to pick, because normally when you re-roll with a Dwarven Ring, you have to get a new result, but with Will of the West, you can just pick any result you want, because uh, you can just keep re-rolling until you get the result you want. So he picks a character die um, to, to just maximize his movement, because he's just going to run and destroy the ring, and he has no corruption, and tons of people in the Fellowship just go destroy the ring. Um, plenty of movement. So... Um, yeah, I mean, what else? What else? What else could he be doing here? Um, he uses his other will of the West to go ahead and move, and um, we get a three. You know, who who cares? Like that. That's just great for him. Um, he's not revealed. Uh, he's just charging along. He decides to take a random companion, which I think makes total sense. You're not revealed. If you hit Strider, then you hit Strider, but you're still not revealed, so you can just keep keep charging charging along. Um, I will say, just to back up one second, using the Dwarven Ring to turn the Will of the West into a character die was good because he guarantees protection from Day Without Dawn, but um, that is, is almost as good as an Elven Ring if what you're trying to do is destroy the, destroy the ring next turn. Because if you roll a Palantir or you roll, um, particularly if you roll a Muster, or an army movement, you can use it on the on the muster, and then you have a three out of four chance, because you can either get Palantir, character, character, Will of the West, a three out of four chance of getting another character movement by changing a muster 
into a character using a dwarven ring. So this is very specific to dwarven ring stuff, um, which is just a house rule to balance the game um, when when you are in a final tiebreaker game. But um, I will say it's it's a little like using an elven ring to turn a will of the west into a character die, which you can do also. Um, so. So maybe he could have done that instead um, because that way he still would have had his Dwarven Ring next turn and he would have an Elven Ring next turn and then he could use both of them next turn. Um, he also could have just let it ride and hoped that I didn't have Day Without Dawn. But given, given the situation that he's in, um, I, it makes sense to me that he used his Dwarven Ring there. I might have maybe considered the Elven Ring, but that's, that's pretty strange. Um, as it turns out, I didn't have Day Without Dawn. So obviously a shadow, I'm very happy to see him spending resources um, to, to protect himself from a threat that I don't actually have. But uh, either way, when, when you're playing free, you have to you have to try and protect yourself against those things. So, so th that's still the correct play, I think. Um, especially when you're in such a strong position, might as well just protect it. All right, so he takes a random companion. That makes sense because... Um, you know he doesn't want to get up to five corruption is a is a little high um maybe he could wait um a little more but i i think it makes sense to start taking random companions at this point especially with a three with um with strider if you hit strider you're a little sad but it's not so bad uh but he gets legolas so he goes up to three corruption he's still hidden um it's great so my situation is I, can, I have seven dice. I can theoretically, theoretically win this turn. Um, I can use one die on Erebor. I can use one die on Dale. I can use one die on Lorien. That's three dice so far. And then I'll have four dice remaining. Pelargir is one. Lamadon is two. Dol Amroth besieging it is three. And then defeating it um, is four. The other way I could spend those four dice is Pilar Gear is one, and then Fords of Eisen is two, Helm's Deep is three, and then defeating Helm's Deep is four. So I do theoretically could could do that. Now, the odds of all of that happening are incredibly low. I think it's good chances that I can take Erebor on one die. It's obviously good chances I can take Dale on one die. It's okay chances that I can take Lorien on one die. Um, you know, not great, um, but okay. Um, and it is really bad chances that I can take, um, Pilar Gear, um, and Dole Amroth, particularly because he can save his Will of the West, um, or even if he doesn't, he could use a ring at the very end, um, if he, if he happens to spend that sooner, um, he, to, to retake Pilar Gear from Osgiliath, um, if I manage to do this thing, or just muster into Dole Amroth. Um, so... You know, I, I, I just, I just decide the the, the odds of me um, winning this turn are so low that it's not worth it. Now, the odds of him winning next turn are so high that you know, why should I even bother trying to stop him at this point? I've spent the whole game doing nothing to corrupt the fellowship, and now all of a sudden I'm going to try and switch. Um, but I am because not necessarily switch to corruption, but at least switch to delay them. So I'm going to, I've decided at this point, I'm going to use these three character dice to play Orc Patrol on On The Went and She Loves Lair. So what's the proper order to play them in? Um, obviously I want the red tiles in there as soon as possible because he didn't get revealed. He's just going to move again with his next die. Um, but I decide to play Orc Patrol first because, um, the hunt pool has at least four chances of um, revealing him. And, you know, that's not great, but there's some chances. And if I reveal him, that's like a that's like stalling him by a whole die. Um, and I don't want to accidentally draw one of my red tiles from Orc Patrol. Uh, that would be <laughs> particularly sad. Um, I need him to draw the red tiles. Um, okay, so... Um, you know, uh, either way, I'm, I'm thinking my odds are, are pretty bad at this point. But um, if I want to have any chance, I need to um, stall him next turn, hope that he st stall him with Orc Patrol this turn, and then stall him with Red Tiles. And then also, if he gets revealed a bunch, 
and also hope that he doesn't draw, um, you know, roll enough uh, movement next turn and also uh, win all my battles. <laughs> so that's a lot of things that need to go right. Um, but I sort of figure that's that's my best chances of, of winning at this point. Um, Okay, I whine a little bit about not not rolling monsters at the beginning of the game. If I had if I had a few more actions this round, um, I could I could potentially win, um, but I don't. So um, I play Orc Patrol. I don't reveal him, but at least I don't draw an eye. I do a little more corruption, and um, he he got a three, so um, he takes a random and gets Boromir. So he's at least I'm whittling down the fellowship a little bit. Hopefully I'm going to get rid of Strider sooner rather than later. Um, I think, again, it makes sense to take a random at this point because um, you're not revealed. So you're still going to be able to keep moving and you just you have four movement. So, all right. Now, at this point, he uses the Will of the West. Um, and I understand that. Uh, because he doesn't want me to play Day Without Dawn. Um, but I think if I had Day Without Dawn, I probably would have already played it this, at this point. Um, and that that's a muster, right? I mean, like, there is a threat here. I have I have five, possibly six attack dice against Dol Amroth. Um, and... Um, you know, you have certain ships. Now, uh, he realized he realized that it was impossible um, for me to win this turn. Uh, we talked about it afterwards. And so at this point, it is impossible for me to win. Um, and therefore, he's thinking, I don't need to reinforce Dol Amroth. I'm just going to go destroy the ring. Uh, I might as well maximize my chances of destroying the ring by ensuring that if he has Day Without Dawn, he can't play it. So... Um, He's sort of giving up all defensive uh, capabilities to just go all, all, all out on the ring. My feeling is you are so far ahead. Um, I think I might want to save this for some defensive capabilities um, in Dole and Dole Amroth because there's still some chances that um, that I could stop you. I don't know. M maybe not. Um this was an interesting choice. And so maybe, you know, looking at all of these character dice, there are some drawbacks. Maybe you want to have one muster in there so you have some flexibility. But um, he goes ahead and uses it. Um, he moves, um, and I draw two and a reveal. So I'm obviously happy to see the reveal. At this point, he continues to take a random. And I think I, I think that's correct again. Because um, you know, at this point, there are these three little tiles that, um, if he gets to Gollum, are going to be just free movement. So he's happy to continue making progress. Um, you know, me may, maybe he's sad. I mean, he's obviously a little sad to lose Strider, but given that he has these three character dice, he's going to be able to keep moving and hiding and moving and hiding. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter that those aren't um, that Strider can't use his ability anymore. All right, so he's just uh, chugging along. Um, I go ahead and play Shelob's Lair. So he managed to move twice before I got these in. And I'm thinking, did I make a mistake by not getting them in sooner? I don't know. M maybe maybe that was a mistake um, and, I, and I shouldn't have done it, but uh, I do like having my ring. So that, that, that gives me more options. All right. So she lob and then he hides and then I play on on they went and so now I've gotten um, both of them in the pool but he he has three movements left. Um, he I um, he passes and at this point um, you know I can now besiege Dol Amroth before um, before he has a chance to uh, muster in there you know just with a normal muster he could muster Gondor if I'm just marching in there so. Um, I'm going to leave these uh, battles for later and take my opportunity. I could have maybe not put the other red tiles in and had a better chance 
at Dol Amroth, but I don't actually have a way to attack with this army with character dice anyway. So it, it doesn't it doesn't really actually help unless I spend two character dice to do that, and I certainly didn't want to um, do that. I'm just hoping that I'll draw like Nazgul or, or Broad or something like that, um, or the the Witch King you know card that lets me move Nazgul, but um, I don't have it at the moment. And uh, just to notice, I don't even have any character <laughs> cards to, to cycle. So uh, attacking up here doesn't even let me uh, cycle into more of them. All right, so uh, Pilar Gear manages to survive and do a damage, and then I attack it again. At least I managed to kill it before it gets into Dol Amroth. Um, and it's kind of surprising he doesn't have any scouts. He still doesn't have scouts. Um, so, so that was kind of nice for me. And, um, but he did manage to inflict two damage. Uh, and then he moves the fellowship and gets revealed. Um, and then I, uh, take Dol Amroth and he hides. And I think, uh, I think really hard about this. Do you attack Dol Amroth now, figuring that he probably, it feels like he has certain ships based on the fact that he used, uh, Imrah Imrahil of Dol Amroth as a combat card earlier, um, or do you get um, do you get the mouth? Uh, you can pause and decide what what you would do. My chances of taking out Dol Amroth with this army, um, even without any leadership, is pretty good. I have great host. Um, I could use relentless assault if I want to. Um, I kind of like. Uh, saving it for going after the the Shire if he ends up retaking Pilar here, um, but with Great Host, like my odds, my odds are pretty good. So, what would you do? I debated for a while, but uh, I got the mouth because I hate using rings um, uh, if I can avoid it, and I want I want to get that extra die. So it's it's almost like. Um, two for one because I save the ring for next turn and I get and I get an extra die. Um, so it's a it's a little risky. I'm hoping he doesn't have certain ships, even though I think he probably does. Um, but I'm also thinking, okay, well, if he has certain ships, there's still a decent like some chance that even with certain if I manage to fly a big um, army in here, that I could potentially take it. Um, and um, if he if he does do that, then I could maybe slow down the fellowship more. I could play another red tile if I draw it. Um, but the ch my my chances are my chances are pretty bad. I just I kind of have to take some risks at this point. Um, but that that was I really don't know if that was the correct choice or not. All right, so he um, has some cards. They don't really matter much. Uh, he ends up discarding Challenge of the King. That's interesting. That's really minor, but um, you know, I probably would have saved Challenge of the King just because it's a it's a decent combat effect. You can use it in Erebor potentially. You could use it in Lorien. I mean, it's it's not much, but um, it could do something. I don't, you know, it's, maybe you save Elven Cloaks because you might you might play it. But do you need do you need two end cards? I don't know. Maybe these guys are coming in. Um, and he gets rid of help and luck for. So I think I would I would have saved at least one of those um, and gotten rid of one of the Ents. Um, possibly even getting rid of um, Elven Cloaks. I don't know. I don't know. You're you're looking pretty good on the hunt. But yeah, I would I would save Elven Cloaks. That's worth definitely worth saving. If you roll a bunch of or a whole bunch of Palantirs, then you can you can play that for sure. Um, but I, I I would have gotten rid of one of the Ents and saved one of the combat cards. Okay, maybe he's still thinking I'm I'm coming in here, but uh, yeah, because he knows that he's going to play certain ships here, so he thinks I'm going to give up on this and then turn here. Um, what he really needs is to get these dudes into Westmnet. <laughs> these these guys should be in Westmnet. Um, all right, but yeah, what what time did he have? Okay, he's going to destroy the ring. So. I roll a nice roll, it's perfectly fine. And he only rolls two movement. Now, um, this is slightly below average, but about average. Um, 
But what's interesting is that one of them is a will of the West. So he is nervous that if I have day without dawn, um, you know, I can get rid of it. So he kind of has to play this first. He, he has to. Um, and he has a choice between playing it for um, certain ships or moving. He could potentially um, play certain ships first and then hope that I don't have Day Without Dawn. Um, but, you know, the chances of him the chances of him destroying the ring this turn are very high, um, or, or at least pretty high. If he, basically the only way, the only way I can stop him is if I draw a red tile and then furthermore don't re uh, reveal him. I have to draw a red tile and reveal him um, to be able to, uh, and not and not on the final move. I, I need to reveal him onto step four. Um, so the chances the the chances of getting revealed or stopped is decent, right? Like he has a decent chance of getting revealed or stopped on his first move. But then I, I still have then he can hide and then he can use a ring to move. Um, and I still uh, at that point would need to would need to draw a red tile for sure. So I need a reveal and a red tile. I think the odds of that are pretty low. Um, but just to note the Dwarven ring situation, if he had um, if he had saved his Dwarven ring and instead used an Elven ring last turn, then he would have a Dwarven ring and an Elven ring, and he could get up to four, potentially four movement, really three and three quarters movement, because there's only a three three quarters chance that that a muster turns into a movement. But you know that's that's a good hedge. Um, okay, so what does he do? Um, he decides to just move the fellowship because why not go destroy the ring? You've made it this far. Um, but Shelob shows up. So obviously that changes things pretty significantly. Um, it's, it, it stops him and um, the, the hunt pool now is there are six tiles, seven tiles that will um, reveal him or stop him and he won't be able to destroy the ring this turn and only five that help him. So at this point, he's hoping that I roll a four or higher because corruption still isn't really a problem. If I roll a four or higher, he can get rid of all of his remaining companions and then these, this one and this zero become um, very good tiles for him. And um, this shows that it was, I think, right for him to have been losing companions uh, when he started. Even though he did risk losing Strider, um, the fact that he's going to potentially be able to get down to Gollum right now is... Um, is good. So those those sort of early decisions can make a difference. Now, to be fair, I did have these in the pool a turn earlier, um, a movement earlier. So, um, but uh, obviously it's lucky. That's that's certainly quite lucky that that came up. Um, so I I roll a five. Shelob does five corruption. I was hoping actually for three or less. Um, he was hoping for four or more. Um, and so uh, this is actually a good result for him because now um, the hunt pool is any of these tiles, the negative one, the three, the two, the two, the one, the one reveal, which isn't really a reveal, or the zero, which isn't uh, a reveal, um, allow him to destroy the ring uh, this turn. Unless, again, I, I happen to draw the the three stop. So I do, I do still have two more chances at the three stop. Um, but, you know, the odds have now gone from strongly in his favor to maybe a bit closer to 50-50. To Still a little in his favor because the way Shelob played out. Okay, so now I'm thinking to myself, I better get my 10 victory points. I'm only at three victory points right now, uh, which is uh, a little nerve-wracking. Um, but... Uh, I have, have enough attack dice, so I'm happy that I have this ring. I'm happy that I have the Mouth of Sauron so I can turn this muster into a... Um, this muster into a into an army movement using the Mouth, and then I still have my ring. So I basically have um, seven attacks here, um, which, which should be enough. 
I need one in Erebor. I need one in Lorien. I need one in Dale. I need one in um, uh, Dol Amroth, hopefully. And then I have three more that's sort of um, uh, flexible to do what I need to do possibly, you know, presumably he's going to come retake Pelargir and then I'll have to take it back from him again, or he doesn't know about this yet, but I can go after the Shire, um, as well with my, with my rage, because I ended up saving rage for the double things. Okay. So, um, I decide to go after Dolamroth. Obviously it's nice to have leadership before you attack, but if he has, um, if he has certain ships, then that's uh, that's bad for me. So I want to go ahead and um, capture this as soon as I can. And I have Onslaught. Um, I have Great Host and I have Onslaught. So my plan is um, Great Host first, and then um, in the end do do some Onslaught. And then if he if he um, comes and retakes Pilar Gear, then I go and send my. Uh, uh, if I end up depleting this army a lot, then I just leave it here. Um, don't worry about retaking Pilar here and just go um, take take the Shire with Rage of Dumbledore next. All right, so um, I end up rolling really well, um, more than I need, and uh, that ends that quickly. Um, so that was that was one. I'm now up to five victory points. He thinks for a while, and um, he does have certain ships, so he's realizing that he can. Um, retake Pilar gear and then um, and and then play certain ships. So I, I think that's a good play. He's going to use this to move and then this to move again. Um, but he can wait and see if he, you know, it does give me one chance to play another red tile if I happen to draw a red tile um, by not moving right away. But if he hadn't done that, I could have gotten to Lamadon and Pilar gear right away, and he wouldn't have had time to play certain ships. So, um, so I think that is that is a good play on his part. All right, so I think for a while, but I use the mouth to take Erebor. I, uh, you know, I want to be efficient with my dice at this point. So I'm going to be going, uh, you know, attacking as heavy as, as I can. I'm going to use uh, Devilry because that's the only place I can use it um, up here. And I'm going to save Onslaught for, for um, the Lorien battle if I need it. Um, or, and Durin's Bane obviously is good in Lorien. Um, Okay, so I happen to roll quite well. I get three hits, um, and he does three back, but it's not going to be enough. I'm still going to be able to um, take it. I draw Shadows Gather, um, and I get my Kill, and I think um, I play it here because um, I I just I didn't... I, I probably should have saved it, um, but I was a little worried about him surviving this. If I If I can't... If I can't take this, uh, then I just I just lose. Um, I mean, I have a few extra dice to work with, but I, I do want to take the stronghold. I'm less worried about Pilar gear with this battle, with the southern battle, because I know that I have a backup plan of um, Rage of the Dunlings against the Shire. I am worried about Tom Bombadil, um, but... I am just sort of hoping that doesn't happen. Maybe I should have saved this for Tom Bombadil, but um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I play it here. I want to finish this battle. And uh, that's that, because I also need enough to be able to take out Dale, too. Like, I, yeah, I'm going to take out Dale no matter what, but um, if, he has, if he has something like... Um, if, if I deplete this army really badly and and he has something like King Brand's men or something like that, you know, I just, I don't want to, don't want to play around with that too much. Okay, so that is going well. Um, he then moves. And so this is, this is the game, you know, pretty significant game deciding. I, there are five tiles in here that are bad for him that guarantee he won't be able to win. There are seven tiles that um, give him an excellent chance of winning, at which point I would only have the three to stop him. Um, so, um, is that true? That's interesting. No, I guess if he, 
if he drew the three, that would put him up to eight. And then the eyes would also stop him on the last movement. Um, so, so that is interesting. Um, I didn't, I didn't realize that before. Um, so there are six very good tiles for him, five very bad tiles, and one sort of keeps the game close to 50-50 tile. Um, this, this is, I think, the tile draw that can basically decide the game. Um, and I drew the other red one. So, you know, that's just, you know, very good luck for me in the end. Um, and, you know, when you're in a situation where you're probably going to lose, you, you should do what you can to give yourself the best chances of coming out of it. So, um, you know, I, it's, there's luck in this game. I, I don't, I don't take too much credit for, for this. Um, this is just good luck. Um, Okay, so he is obviously very demoralized. He reveals the fellowship because corruption now can potentially be an issue. I don't know if that's right or not. It probably doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so he knows he's using these musters probably just to defend Pilar gear. Um, I move Nazgul because... Um, though I, I I have an extra attack, um, like this is using up one of my attacks to to move um, Nazgul, but having extra leadership here and having extra leadership um, in Dol Amroth in case he you know he can just muster twice. Um, I want to be able to do that if he has Tom Bombadil, and because I played Mumakil, I won't be able to get rid of Tom Bombadil. Um, you know, looking at this, maybe maybe the better play would have been to save Mumakil, um, not move, not move my armies, and then defeat, and not not move my Nazgul with this, and then defeat um, Lorien with one die, and then um, also. Um, take the Shire. Did I have enough dice for that? So <clears throat> one die uh, for Dale, one die for Lorien, and then um, four dice to take the Shire. One, two, uh, three for three for Tom Bombadil, and then four to take the Shire. So um, it was... Uh, I'm mixing up my order slightly. I think this is just an attack against Dale. So I, I attack Dale. That's fine. I, I'm going to definitely do that no matter what. Um, but now, um, now with this die. So this is, this is the, this is the situation because what, what has happened now is by using this die to move Nazgul instead of just attacking right now be be without moving them, I make myself vulnerable um, to Tom Bombadil, and if that happens, then I'm forced to attack Pilar Gear. Um, so I des I decide to do that. I don't know if that was correct. Um, obviously, it's nice to have five leadership in Lorien. I, I still need to be able to take Lorien, but I do have um, Durin's Bane and Onslaught. So I think my chances are pretty good, and three elites. So I think my chances are pretty good, even without bringing in the the leadership and if i wanted to maximize my chances of winning i should i should probably just play around um the fact that he might have tom bombadil but and sorry at this point it's already too late because i don't have um i don't have the uh the army card so this is sort of uh, a lot of detailed analysis it, uh, what if situ situations um but that's if I were, you know, really playing to to all the possibilities, maybe, maybe I should have held on to to the uh, Muma kill. All right, but at this point, I go ahead and move because I, I just I know that if he has Tom Bombadil, I'm not going to be able to get rid of it anyway. So um, I go ahead and and move. Um, I put one Nazgul over here, sort of telegraphing the fact that I have. Um, Rage of the Dunlundings. I thought about not doing it at all because um, what if he, um, you know, would play it 
uh, Tom Bombadil during the during the combat in Lorien. Um, so you know, I don't know. This is this was probably a waste. I should have I should have baited him if he had it. I should have baited him into into playing it in Lorien. I could have put the extra leadership down here, preparing for the attack against Pelargir. Um, my plan is to fork Pelargir and the Shire. So even if he has Tom Bombadil, he's not going to be able to use both these musters um, to protect Pelargir. Um, he'll have to use one of them against against the Shire because I'm going to be threatening it. Um, okay, so either way, I, I move Nazgul. I do put one here to help. I guess I'm slightly worried about um, the card that musters an elite into the Shire. Um, so if he has both certain ships and uh, the card that musters an elite into the Shire, I don't know which I have better chances of taking. I, I think probably I think probably Pilargear at that point. So yeah, long analysis, he probably should I probably should have just um, put the put the Nazgul here. Um, if he has Tom, Tom Bombadil, he's stopping me. If he has any card to reinforce the Shire, he's stopping me at the Shire. So, and if he doesn't have any card to reinforce the Shire, then four regulars are plenty to take out the Shire by themselves. Um, and it's not like I'm short on character dice. I have army movements to attack with them. So um, this is a mistake. Should have put it in Dol Amroth. All right. So I attack. Um, okay, he goes ahead and plays certain ships. I don't know why. Why not? It doesn't doesn't really matter. He could have just waited a turn, but whatever. Um, he does have it. He obviously feels bad for not getting them into Dol Amroth. They're a lot less effective in Pilar gear. Um, I attack Lorien. Uh, Balrog uh, does the Balrog thing. This battle goes, you know, about about what we expect. Um, I, you know, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what, what I draw at this point. Um, I draw a useless card, but the, these battles are not... Um, going to be decided on that. And Lorien falls. Um, and then I play Rage, uh, which is not a surprise because I put that <laughs> Nazgul there. Um, and on his last card, he um, he draws a palant. He draws a card because he doesn't have Tom Bombadil. Obviously, if he had Tom Bombadil, he would play it. Um, you know he's he's lost at this point without without Tom Bombadil these these guys win no matter what um, so yep yeah. so he I, I move my I move both my armies if he did have Tom Bombadil my plan was to make this attack into Pilar gear um, but since he doesn't have it I use the ring um, to attack into uh, the Shire and the Shire false. He he did play um, Confusion, so um, if I had rolled a whole bunch of ones, then um, he managed, he, he might have been able to survive that, but um, obviously four against one um, is a huge battle in my favor, and um, that is that is the game. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Uh, I certainly uh, thought that James played very well this game. I made a couple of mistakes and um, and then ended up getting lucky on the on the Mordor track. Um, and he played really well. So uh, James for listening, thanks for the game. Uh, look forward to rematches in the future. Thanks so much. Uh, the next tournament is gonna start in January, 2021. I look forward to everybody getting their revenge against me.